Long live the king. Godzilla King of the Monsters is directed by Michael Doherty and starring Kyle Chandler, Vera Farmiga, Millie Bobby Brown, Ken Watanabe, Sally Hawkins, Charles Dance, Ziyi Zhang, and Thomas Middleditch. Before I go any further, I just want to say there will not be any plot spoilers in this review. This is the sequel film or follow-up film to the 2014 Godzilla film, which was directed by Gareth Edwards. And this film takes place five years after the events in that film, and the world is still kind of reeling and dealing with the appearance of these monsters, specifically Godzilla. And now there are monarch sites set up all across the world that basically house these gigantic titans, monster creatures, and there's an environmental terrorist group that is going around now and unleashing all of these monsters it is up to Monarch teaming up with Godzilla in order to stop these monsters from literally raining down havoc across the world. But the film also centers around the family comprised of Kyle Chandler, Vera Farmiga, and Millie Bobby Brown, and it also deals with the things they're going through and the strife within their family. If you cannot tell already by just the name of the channel, it is literally derived from the name Godzilla. And lo and behold, I am kind of a big Godzilla fan. I'm a very much a new Godzilla fan. I've only been a Godzilla fan really since 2014 with the Gareth Edwards film. I am making my way throughout the entire filmography or franchise of Godzilla right now, and I'm slowly adding all of them to my collection. And what I really just love about these kind of giant monster movies is they're not only great fun and entertainment, but they do have a lot of themes in them, especially the good ones, the ones like Godzilla in some of its sequels. And this is a sequel to the 2014 Gareth Edwards film, and it's still playing within this world and within a lot of the same themes. The Godzilla we have in this franchise is not a malevolent Godzilla. He is a Godzilla who is essentially trying to protect Earth, and he's trying to kind of battle back against the unbalance of the world when it comes to all of these monsters that he has to deal with, and we have to deal with as humans. And of course, there's a lot of collateral damage because of that. And a lot of that collateral damage leads to human involvement in the world of these monsters. That's when these films really struggle. It is not only a problem with these modern day films, but I think it was a problem with the old films in the Godzilla franchise as well. But sticking with the positives right now, I would say the main positives with this film is if you go into this movie with the mindset and with the expectation that you just want to see these giant legendary monsters have these big throwdown battles, these big epic battles with all kinds of mayhem and things like that, you get that in this film. You get to see the monsters in this film much more so than you did in the previous Godzilla film, which was a criticism of that film as well. I think it, what that film did kind of worked for what it was going for, but now that we know these monsters exist, we know kind of what they look like, let's see them on full display, and we get them on full display in this film. Unfortunately, beyond that kind of spectacle and that amazingness of seeing these larger-than-life creatures on screen, we get a human story here that is, for the lack of a better term, generic, bland, if you will, kind of boring. A lot of it has to do with the fact that the dialogue that these actors have to work with is not very good. It, there's a lot of exposition, there's a lot of just cringeworthy dialogue, and it really doesn't help when, if you're going to this film wanting to see the monsters, you have to deal with all of these human interactions that you really just don't care about. And it's not the film's fault that you don't care about them, that's just us as a viewer and what we are expecting from the movie. But what you have here is really first-class actors given a kind of mediocre to bad screenplay to work with, and they're making the most of it. Kyle Chandler's a fantastic actor, Vera Farmiga, a fantastic actress, Millie Bobby Brown is a rising star, Ken Watanabe, I think, is a fantastic underrated actor. But despite some of the really bad dialogue and some of the bad writing, 
writing, I kind of liked what the film was going for on the human level. The film does center around the family of Kyle Chandler, Vera Farmiga, and Millie Bobby Brown, and the tragedy that they have to deal with and the fracturing of their family and just them trying to come together, not literally physically, but I think mentally throughout the film is an interesting journey that I really wish the film capitalized on a little more. Instead of just having a movie where you're just chasing monsters the whole time. If we're going to try to inject some sincerity, some genuineness, and some depth into this movie, go a bit deeper because the film doesn't go deep enough with some of the things it's trying to do. It really saves a lot of that depth for the monsters and what it's trying to say about the monsters and their relation to Earth and their relation to humanity. These monsters are older than humanity. They are essentially the real rulers of this world. We are kind of just guests living on it and now we are kind of having to deal with them being around and the film really plays heavily into those environmental themes and heavily into those kind of philosophical themes as well the film like i said does have depth to it but you kind of have to get through a lot of murkiness to finally get to it when it comes to the directing in this film i thought michael doherty did a good job i don't think he did a spectacular job i personally think the first film was a better directed film if we're comparing the two with one another but i think michael doherty did did a good job. He delivered to us, I think, what we wanted from a certain perspective. When it comes to the shot selection and the overall cinematography, there are some amazing shots in this movie, and then there are some really not so good shots in this movie that are kind of murky and kind of lowly lit. I know the first film had a lot of co complaints about the film being too lowly lit to the point where you couldn't see anything. This film kind of has some of those problems at times as well and it's really interesting that they chose to kind of almost hide these monsters at time in, in the shadows and the fog of war and just really goes to show their mystique, their sense of secrecy, and their sense of legendary status. So with all that being said, I'm going to give this film a 3.4 out of 5 stars. If you go into it with kind of lower expectations, with the expectation that you're only really going to see the monsters fight each other and that's really where the positive aspects lie with this film I think you'll be okay if you're going into it with the expectation you're going to see really good character story and things like that that's not this type of film and it definitely showed because of the weak screenplay but overall I think you can have a fun time with it and I think some of the older Godzilla fans will like it as well this has been my review of Godzilla King of the Monsters if you like this video please check out the other videos on my channel